Hello everyone, welcome to Pradbi and today's uh, session on success stories is going to be so inspiring as I'm honored to introduce Unnath who has recently achieved the remarkable feat of securing admission at FMS Delhi. So Unnath, heartfelt congratulations on this accomplishment and a warm thank you for gracing us with your presence. We are truly <laughs> excited to delve into your journey and learn uh, from you. So thank you so much for having me here and uh, yeah, so should I go on with the normal MBA introduction or is it is it my introduction? Personally? No, your introduction, the way you want, not the typical introduction that we hope uh, from you. So uh, anything, just tell us what your profile is. Sure. So uh, I am in my final year of law at Nalsar Hyderabad. And uh, I mean, my, my academic trajectory has been a bit off with respect to how my career choices have been. So I was preparing for JWE, but I completely screwed it up. Then I started looking as to what options do I have. So IPMAT was there, CLAT was there. And IPMAT back then was not, not a very, very prominent option in 2018, 2019. So I went mm -hmm. with CLAT and I landed up somehow at Nalsar and... Uh, they are. My, my law school journey has been pretty uh, transformative in the sense of how I started looking at the longer run as to how my career should look like. And by my second or third year, I was as clear uh, that I'll be going with an MBA post my graduation. How and when that, that I was not certain of, but yeah, I was, I was sure of that I'll, I, at some point of time I'll enter into a B school. And I think I'll be doing that right now. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Great. And what motivated you to pursue MBA? I had my internships at law, various law firms and startups, but uh, I mean, I didn't, didn't find that kick somewhere because I mean, I am not very used to working, you know, in a very SOP manner. This this this, this agreement has to be drafted. These, these changes have to be made. I, I personally don't wish to enter into that monotony at a very early stage of my career. And uh, MBA always, MBA, it, it's a very Indian traditional thought graduation ke baad go for an MBA that, that that was there and I mean I was also not very sure of entering into the professional trajectory very soon right after my graduation so I can buy two more years and the, the prospects that a B school offers is unparalleled unparalleled in terms of the in terms of the exposure that I'll be getting and after Nalsar I believe that that should be my polishing uh, last polishing school I would say finishing school yeah. And also, it's not very typical that uh, after law, you pursue MBA. So how do you yeah. think this legal expertise of you will help in your MBA and what extra will you bring to the table? I mean, in, a, in law school, the, the first uh, thing that, that you, the, the first skill that you acquire is, is, is settling with the uh, diversity that you have around yourself. I mean, in in a law school, there are people from various backgrounds and they are actually coming over here to acquire that critical lens and look at the world with, with, a, with a very nuanced uh, vision. And that nuanced vision with a, which a law school curriculum would impart in you. Mm -hmm. I believe that that brings out the sense of empathy that, that that makes you very socially aware. And at this point of time, I believe management education is is is, uh, is in the dire need of having a very nuanced vision of the socio-economic fiber as to how the decision shall be made. And this, this I believe, a law school, a law student would definitely bring onto the table. Definitely. So what all exams did you give and what were your scores? I appeared for NMAT even before my CAT. So mm -hmm. a week before my CAT attend was my NMAT exam. I scored, if I'm not wrong, 252 mm -hmm. in NMAT. And uh, then it was CAT. In CAT, I scored 99.96 percentile. Then I gave I gave my CAT, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, my CAT, I mm -hmm. had a score of 21.75. I got through it as well. And mm -hmm. uh, then I appeared for SNAP. SNAP is altogether a different story. I was... Actually, uh, I mean, the CAT response sheet was out and I was contemplating as to whether I should appear for SNAP or not. So, I mean, I thought that the money is already gone. So, let, let, let's just sit in the exam. So, even before even before 10 minutes to the exam, I was contemplating whether I should go out of the exam hall or not. But yeah, I still sat for it and I scored somewhere at 99.21 in SNAP. 
I didn't appear for that. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, people usually say that you have to appear for NMAT before CAT. So is that why you appeared for NMAT? I mean, for me, NMAT was a step toward uh, in order to get into the exam zone. I mean, you, you appear for uh, countless mocks left, right and center, but I mean, they actually cannot give you the flavor of a classic exam setup, but NMAT did that for me. And I mean, there was a lot on stake. I, had I not performed well in NMAT, my confidence would have been on minus one or minus two level. But yeah, still somehow NMAT went well and that strategy didn't actually backfire. So it it, mm -hmm. it is pretty much a gamble. But I mean, for, for people who wish to appear, who wish to enter into that zone before actually get, uh, going for the, main, the CAT attempt, NMAT, appearing for NMAT before the uh, main CAT attempt is is helpful, I would say, to actually actually analyze as to how you would be reacting in the exam setup and how would you would be reacting to the normal time pressure and stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so did you prepare just for the CAT or all the OMETs as well? I mean, I prepared for OMETs as well. I started preparing for NMAT and SNAP somewhere around September when my okay. CAT prep was almost done and I was only okay. appearing for mocks on a daily basis. So, I mean, I had not, not a lot on my platter back then. So, I mean, it it seemed right to actually get into the basic grammatical concept, which I was out of touch for more than five years. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I had a gap year as well. So, I mean, five years of my graduation plus one year of gap. So, I mean, six years being out of touch with all the basic concepts, I thought I would give myself a two-month window mm -hmm. to actually get through them. Okay. And how did you go about preparing for CAT? Can you give your strategy for each section? Sure. So my preparation started somewhere around November, uh, a year before my uh, CAT attempt. Mm -hmm. So I started with quants, obviously. I mean, this is the syllabus. Syllabus all apart is there in quants only. So I started off with quants. I was done with my syllabus uh, somewhere around mid-February. And uh, I gave myself a month as a breather to actually revise whatever I have learned in quants. So, so, I mean, I, this is my personal uh, idea that for QA, the, 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 there are no short tricks or no formulas. I mean, the, there are methods. So, once you're aware of the methods, you can get down to the formulas. You can get down to the short tricks. I mean, there are no short tricks. You, the, you just bring out an exception to a concept and the short trick would be gone. So, I mean, you, you need to uh, be aware of the concept. So, I gave myself a good four and a half month to actually be acquainted with the basic mm -hmm. concepts and then move on to taking mocks. So four and a half months for covering the QA uh, syllabus, one month for its revision, and then it was mocks and I mean daily practice. For verbal, I thought I'm pretty good at verbal before I actually attempted a mock. So uh, that that single digit score actually helped me to get through this feeling that I'm pretty good at verbal. And mm -hmm. uh, then I started off with the preparation. It was somewhere around the, the hardcore uh, verbal prep start was started somewhere around April only. Mm -hmm. Once I got, got out of my uh, fourth year. Uh, mm -hmm. So I started off preparing for verbal. I went through all the lectures properly and not just covering it for the sake of knowing the concepts. And uh, then uh, once the concepts were done, it was about practicing three to four RCs for a month or two. And once that was done, it was somewhere around June or July, I started taking a lot of sectionals. So mm -hmm. the, the, there have been a, there have been patches where my scores uh, used to, uh, scores were dipping a lot in verbal section in the mocks. So mm -hmm. I started attempting one sectional per day and for the next 15 days, I attempted a sectional every day and this course got stabilized enough. So, so I mean, mm -hmm. for verbal, it, it is about the mindset, how, how, uh, with the, what, what is the intensity that you are preparing with? So the more brute force you have for the section, it, it would be fine. But the more cautious you start being about the section, I would not attempt this RC. These mm -hmm. questions are not worth attempting. I might get it wrong. You you completely mess up your paper. So, I mean, the, the more attempts you get in uh, the verbal section, the higher the probability is of you scoring good marks. I mean, it can still backfire, but yeah, I mean, it can backfire any time in the section. Mm -hmm. And for LRDI, LRDI, the, the, there are no concepts as such. They're the, the just sets. So... Uh, once I, I gave myself a week or two for 
covering the basic types of uh, types of sets including arrangement team formation selection games etc mm -hmm. and once it was done i started off with the pyqs so the, the pyqs from 1998 to 2008 though those papers had sets which were relatively easy uh, relatively mm -hmm. easier as compared to what 2017 onwards uh, had so once it was uh, once th that part was done i started off with the 2017 to 2022 set uh, 2022 papers and th those were pretty intense in terms of the concept they were involving because it was th there was no clear cut demarcation as to what an arrangement set would look like or as to what a team formation set would look like and uh, once that was done i believe i started practicing sets on a random basis so i had uh, my set of study materials uh, that i used to refer and i believe that that pretty much did the job i somewhere solved around 700 to 800 sets throughout my preparation so yeah Oh my God, that's great. And how many mocks did you attempt? So the last mock that I remember, the cat, pure cat mock, that was 127th mock, excluding the OMEDS mock. Oh my God. Okay, interesting. I gave 40 mocks and I felt I'm done. I was exhausted at 40. 127 is a huge number. So I didn't solve any other material as such after August. So for me, it was mock per day. So two hours of mock web, I mean, I used to get 66 questions and I needed to solve them in a span of two hours. So I thought that that is still better than going for four, uh, randomly four hours or four sets and doing them throughout the day. So, I mean, it, it was a time efficient uh, method for me rather than uh, the mock based practice. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how did you balance your academics at, you know, the law uh, college and preparing for CAT? It must have been tough. I mean, somewhere, once you are in your fourth or fifth year, you know how to get through the academic. So th that that actually doesn't become a big hit, a hurdle in your preparation. And okay. uh, I mean, uh, what, what you need to do on a daily basis, you need to solve three RCs, three LR sets and 20 points question. Three mm -hmm. RCs I used to do right after I uh, woke up in the morning, it was done. And somewhere be between my lunch break, I used to solve three LR sets. And once I was mm -hmm. back to my home after, uh, in the evening, 20 or 30 point questions would hardly take 40 minutes. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, could you reflect on any memorable experiences that you learned during your MBA journey? Uh, yeah. So, apart from the GDPI process, it was somewhere around August end when my scores were actually dipping from, mm -hmm. they used to revolve around 100, 110 to actually 60s. So, I mean... That, that that was actually a time when I was totally clueless as to how I shall proceed with. So <laughs> randomly I rang uh, up to my mother as to what, what has to be done. And she she with her limited knowledge, but I would say she she knows a lot about the cat prep and uh, the aptitude exam. So so she she started randomly uh, advising me to go to the previous mock, see how it shall be done and me with my inflated sense of ego I was not ready to actually do that but after a couple of days I did that and it actually worked so I mean yeah that that that, that patch holds a very special place for me yeah see moms know everything so they are experts just listen to them right yeah yeah okay so could you describe your PI experience at FMS so my FM FMS interview actually did not go very smooth, I would say. So the yeah, you mentioned it to me that uh, it yeah. was a bit illogical, I guess. You mentioned yeah. it. So I mean, they, they, I mean, uh, what what caught me off the guard was the extempore topic. Uh, mm -hmm. It was about the relevance of International Court of Justice in twenty first century. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. Hardly any of the law students would be talking about yeah. the importance of ICJ in any of the tea time conversation. That that actually holds no place in our discussion. Our discussions are limited to high courts and supreme courts. ICJ, I, I told, I never expected anything on the ICJ front or United Nations. Yeah. So that, that caught me off the guard, but whatever I knew, I spoke mm -hmm. of. Then the interview started and Luckily, they, they started hitting on the areas that I was fairly comfortable with without me mentioning that I am particularly comfortable with those areas. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to actually answer the law-based questions, which mm -hmm. they, they seemingly were not very uh, satisfied. But, I mean, yeah, it, it turned out well. Okay. So, any PI question uh, from any B-school interview that uh, amazed you? 
So any stressful uh, interview that you faced? Most of my interviews have been pretty stressful apart from uh, Maika, I would say. So okay. my my Calcutta's interview, it was my, I am Calcutta's interview. It was my first interview back in 20, back on 28th of Jan. So it had, it had everything. It had questions ranging from probability to the Indian politics to law and i mean as basic as what is the difference between an act and, and regulation i mean you, you actually don't focus on these aspects and uh, mm -hmm. yeah but the, these questions were uh, pretty much difficult and it was my uh Cody course uh liberal science management interview wherein mm -hmm. the entire interview revolved around why i wish to go for an mba and why lsm why not a general mba and and it it actually was a very stressful interview because whatever i was saying that they were okay, they completely mm -hmm disagreeing with the same i don't know how it, it actually went but i was not very satisfied with that interview mm -hmm. okay so you also converted maika so how was the ge experience then i mean maika's interview the entire interview process along with the exam was for, by far the most wholesome experience that i've ever had the okay. ge process revolved around us redesigning the marketing campaign of apple as to mm -hmm. uh, if it was actually in the business of selling apples to uh, mm -hmm. the elder, the older community in India. And uh, so we made some jingles, we made a poster and whatnot. I mean, I didn't make the poster, but yeah, I'm not very good at drawing. So, and the interview process, it actually lasted for, I guess, 45 minutes. And okay. it, it actually tested me as... Uh, on a personal basis as to what kind of a person I am, what are my thought processes, what kind of a friend circle do I hang out with. So it it was a very wholesome experience and it was actually a personal interview and not an interview. <laughs> great, great. And how did you prepare for these uh, interviews? Any resources that you used? I had my mock PIs run by Swear. So yeah, at prep B. He is from mm -hmm. a law background. So he, he gave me some insights as to how the in, uh, interviews would revolve around the basic legal concepts and uh, my intention of going for an MBA. And apart from that, I think I uh, prepared pretty much on my own for the, for the current affairs part because, I mean, I've been in a law school for, for, for the last five years. So I know mm -hmm. how, these, how these things work, how these interviews would work. So, I mean, I had, a fair, fair, I had a fair idea as to what kind of current affairs questions would be asked and how it would be more opinion-based rather than fact-based. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I actually did not prepare for the interviews much as compared to what I did for CAT. So it, it was not even 1% of what I did for the exam. So. Okay. And uh, what are the common mistakes that people make during the preparation phase? And how did you navigate your way out? So, I mean, if if I am a third year student or a pre uh, penalty material student, I would be thinking of a writing card. The first mistake that I would be doing is reading other people's experiences as to how the exam went and not knowing as to what the exam would actually mean for me, how I should navigate through it, what, what what is the psychology of the examiner behind taking that particular exam? What is the psychology of setting up a quants paper where arithmetic holds seven questions, but you cannot actually solve more than four questions? So it is yeah. pointless. For it, it is actually pointless to devote a lot of your energy in arithmetic where, where you're clear that you, you'll be not attempting the higher order questions. Rather, you can actually get through the basics of all the areas. You can actually solve a lot of mocks. You can actually take, take a look at how the previous year papers have turned out to be, how people have performed in it. So without knowing the exam, you cannot actually ace and ace any of the exam. And that holds true for any of the competitive exam that I've appeared for. I've appeared for fairly good number of exams throughout my trajectory, starting from JE that I, that I screwed obviously but i mean the, the ones i started performing decently well was clart ip mat both indoor both at, then uh, symbiosis entrance then n mat then uh, the undergrad nmims exam snap cat and my cat so i mean having those exams in front having those papers in front of me i uh, i could sense how the paper would turn out to be on the exam day what combinations could be made for the paper what sections could be made difficult and e easy so i mean you need to be very thorough with how the exam can be rather than what the exam should be yeah with True. respect to the syllabus hmm. also you come from law background and there are not much resources that are available 
So what advice would you give? What all the uh, things that law people should focus on? Any thing from academics that they should, you know, actually read before going to the interview? I mean, for the interviews, the, 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 the it, it would be like, a, 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 like not no, noticing the elephant in the room. The, if you are not very aware of uh, topics ranging from corporate law, because it has a clear intersection with the business world, company mm -hmm. law, basically, and then intellectual property rights, because I mean, marketing is, is fairly con connected with IPR, then labor laws, because you, you might have HR as your area of interest. Mm -hmm. Then there comes the aspect of competition law which again is is a is a factor that influences the market in general so i mean you 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 are not supposed to know the core sections of i would say indian penal code or civil, uh, criminal procedure code because because uh, i mean even the interviewer would not be aware of that but what they the the topics the, those uh, those subjects which have a clear bearing on the market or in the business world in general you should be fairly aware of those uh, concepts Okay. And what are you looking forward to most at uh, FMS? I mean, FMS would be altogether a new experience for me because throughout the last five years, I have been in a purely residential campus. And this, this, this would be the first time that I would be actually stepping out of my comfort zone in order to manage things on my own. So that, that, is, that is one thing that I'm genuinely excited and stressed about but apart from that i mean fms as an institution why it is very close to me even i mean my calcutta lucknow kodi kodi indoor results are still yet to come but mm -hmm. i mean i'll be joining fms that that is for sure so okay. i mean that that institute holds a very special place for me because i mean on a philosophical basis you you ace card you would have a fairly decent shot at fms that that is not the case with other institutes they, they are actually picking up the creamest of the cream along mm -hmm. with the CAT exam. So, I mean, that that institute like FMS shows faith in their course curriculum, in their pedagogy, as well as the students are taking in. They actually don't want a very stellar profile. They'll be helping you to build that and get through whatever mm -hmm. aspirations you have. So, I mean, that, that institute, I resonate, it actually resonated on a very philosophical basis. So, I mean, yeah, that that, that is pretty much overwhelming for me. Okay, great that you have already made the choice. So one final piece of advice that you want to give to all the audience. I mean, back uh, since uh, the CAT examination has been done for me and the interview process has uh, interview process started back in, I guess, January only. I've been see uh, seeing a lot of people uh, uh, worrying a lot about how their profile is. So, I mm -hmm. mean, that, that, that question, I believe, and the noise about as to uh, what, what strategy has to be adopted for scoring XXS percentile or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the only piece of advice that I followed. I got it through my mentors and I'd like to pa pass on to the uh, future mm -hmm. aspirants is the exam is very personalized as to how you can uh, perform in it. And the interview process, it is actually, the, there's a reason why it is termed as a personal interview because it is very personal to you. You, you actually need not to, you need, you need not to copy what the, uh, what other people have followed or what, what the strategy has been. The, the key is to be aware of what the process is, what the exam is, and I mean, be humble. Be humble to what your aspirations are. So, yeah. Very true. So, thank you so much, Unnat, for taking your time out from your busy schedule and joining us today. Uh, I'm sure all the experiences that you have shared, they'll be very insightful to our audience. And congratulations once again. The whole PrepV team thank is you. proud of you. And uh, good luck on your journey ahead. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. All right.